All right, we're back at it again, hiking the trail. Wanted to make uh, one more cancer video because uh, if I don't, <laughs> if I don't do them back to back, I'll forget what I told you in the first one, and then repeat myself in the second one, like I have a tendency to do. So these are just some other. This is these are mainly just stories. Uh, although you can get some benefit out of it, and I'd, I'll tell you the. Let's swing around and get the trail. The uh, here's a huge tip. I'll just get the tips out of the way first, and then I'll just tell the stories. Was uh, and of course I got to tie it into a story. Um, but yeah, if you uh, if you do have cancer or any any other major medical condition, you know one thing that you want to do is make a list of all the uh, drugs that you're you're, t you're taking. You know, like a Vastin or a Warfin or your blood thinners. You know, everything. Everything. Just put together that list and, um, and keep it with you at all times. You know, in your wallet or wherever. Uh, because and here's. Here's the reason why, folks. Uh, so about three weeks into the, the first round of chemotherapy, you know, when I got cancer the first time, um, my stomach, you know, I thought I had, you know, gas really bad. I was like, man, and so it's, you know, stupid me. I'm, I'm actually walking up and down the stairs trying to, you know, get things moving. <laughs> Not trying to gross you out or anything. And, uh, and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And then... About three o'clock in the morning, I just I just keeled over. I mean, I, I was, I you know, there's pain and then there's super pain. And uh, you know, I got into my wife's bedroom. I said, "Take me, take me to the hospital right now." I said, "I mean," she's you know, she's like, "What? What? What?" So he, <laughs> this is the funny part of the story. So we get us to you know, I got I managed to get into the car. I mean, and it was a feat. I mean, I was in that much pain. I'm just keeled over you know, whimpering, and uh, so she starts driving, and it's cold, you know, this is up in Michigan, and uh, so, you know, at three o'clock in the morning, and she's, she comes to a stoplight, <laughs> she stops, I, I'm like, what are you doing, you know, there's not another car on the road, I mean, you know, and she goes, I'm stopping for, I said, Don't, you know, I said, F the damn stop, I go, Get me to the hospital, you know. And, so, and then she did it again. She stopped at another stop. And I was like, oh, my God. Anyway, that's the funny part of the story. I mean, if you can just imagine it. You know, here's here's somebody driving you to the hospital. And, yeah, like, I, you know, I, I was dying, actually, is what was happening. So we get to the hospital. And uh, I can't uh, I can't hardly get out of the car. And so when I did get out of the car, you know, I, I might have been able to take... I don't remember if I took a couple steps or not, if I or if I just crawled into the emergency room. Uh, and uh, but I, once I got in there, I mean, I just curled up in a ball and and laid on the floor and whimpered, you know. And uh, the, I remember the emergency room; it was empty. You know, I guess they were all out doing their chores, you know, because it's three, you know, three o'clock in the morning. They're not expecting people to arrive at the emergency room on a cold night, you know unless it's in an ambulance and uh so they you know i, I was told my, my, my screaming to my wife I, well i couldn't scream all i could do is just you know find somebody please god find you. you know so she's running around trying to find somebody and uh so finally you know they came out and they, and they came over to me now you know here i can't even hardly speak and and they're miss Callis, you know we need to know what drugs you you've been taking you know for your chemo for your cancer, you know, we need to know what drugs you're on, and uh, I, I couldn't tell them, of course, I didn't even, you know, I mean, I, I knew a couple of them, but I mean, I, I didn't have the whole list, I mean, because when you, when you got lymphoma, you know, there's just like five or six, it's a cocktail, you know, of all kinds of different stuff, plus the blood thinners, and, you know, everything else, and uh, so, and I couldn't tell them, and my wife, you know, she, she had no idea, <laughs> she, she should have, you know, and uh, so for a long time, they, you know, they finally, I assume they got my, uh, my uh, oncologist on the, on the phone somehow eventually. But it took a, it took a couple hours for them to, to load me up with morphine, um, you know, to kill the pain. So I suffered for a long period of time, you know, because guess what? I didn't have that list of drugs in my wallet or on my person. I could have just handed it to them and they would have had it, you know, and... Uh, 
And on that list of drugs, you know, you got any special information, you know, I, I put contact information on there, uh, you know, phone numbers, all of that stuff, so that they can put it all in the computer when you get to the uh, the emergency room. So anyway, they 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 get get me back there, and man, I tell you what, that morphine is just awesome. You know, it's, I can see why people would get addicted to it. You know, because I mean that pain, it just went away. I mean, it was like it was like a, I felt normal again. I, you know, I felt good too, and uh, you know, so it, and I'm thinking, well, you know, maybe this isn't so bad. And uh, so <laughs> once again, you. Know, by the way, I mean, I, I, we'll get into to more of the stories, but you know, Dr. Chang, yeah, I wonder, wonder how he, what he thought, you know, because that guy cut on me, I think. Uh, 13 times 13 or 15 times and I, I can't imagine what it was what it was like for him with me He says is this oh, this is mr. Ellis again. What's he in for this time? You know, but anyway, so he comes to the hospital and uh, You know once again, he's he's like I said bedside manner man that guy He was a great surgeon, you know, what do you want a surgeon that you know? But this people question people used to ask about Trump, you know, do you, do you want somebody with a good personality? that does a, a shitty job, or, or do you want somebody that's a, that's a real horse's ass, which Chang was, and, and, you know, is a good surgeon? Well, I prefer to have the horse's ass. It's a great surgeon. And so he comes in, you know, and uh, he says, uh, he says, how soon can we get Mr. Ellis into surgery? And I'm thinking, you know, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm thinking, well, you know, once again, I'm like, are you sure we got it? And then he comes over, and, uh, you know, I guess he thought he was doing me a favor. He says, well, Mr. Ellis, he says, I hate to tell you, but we're going to, I'm going to cut you from the belly button down to your groin and uh, pull out your intestines and uh, we'll see what's going on. <laughs> what is that? Too much information, TMI? <laughs> you know, of course, I'm sitting there blinking my eyes. I probably look like a deer in the headlights, you know, I'm like, holy shit, you know. And uh, so they, you know, they did, they rushed me on down and it turns out what had happened was the Avastin had per perforated my bowels and uh and if you want to that's why in the movies you know when these guys get stabbed in the stomach and they're sitting there you know and they're they're toughing it out you know and they're, they're going to continue fighting or they they walk for two that is such bull crap i mean when those intestines are perforated all of that uh the, all, all you know all that bile spills off into your cavity and uh you want to talk pain i mean that is just unbelievable I, I, you know, I've, I've never experienced anything like that. So, uh, short story long, I was in the hospital for, I don't know, two or three weeks, I think is, and, uh, you know, but the, another another funny story was, uh, they had me, I was sharing a room on that particular time, and this guy was beside me, and I, you know, because I, you know, I had to, I, I, they were pumping my stomach, you know, and so I didn't have to, to worry about going to the bathroom that much. But the guy, but the guy beside me, I noticed he never got out of the bed either. And I'm thinking, man, I'm one, wonder when that guy has to go to the bathroom. You know, is is he ever going to go to the bathroom? You know, and that was the other thing. They put that tube down my my nostril while I was in anesthesia. I mean, so all I had was a sore throat when I woke up. That, that tube going down your throat into your stomach is, it's painful. I mean, it's really uh, agitating and. Uh, it's, hard to sleep with it in and everything but the morphine you know really helped out and they have it and that's another stupid thing that they do in the hospital they give you that little button you know push the button when you when you want more morphine well <laughs> you'll find yourself ding 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 every every, every other minute ding 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 you know because you can't get enough and it's, it's regulated anyway so they might as well just give you the max and say you know this is this is the best we can do for your pain mr ellison you know if if if, if if it gets much worse, you know, come, ring the bell and we'll come back and maybe, you know, we'll talk to your doctor and maybe we can up, up the dosage, you know, limit or whatever. But, uh, so that, that was, but anyway, so the guy's laying there and I'm thinking, Ed, is he ever going to go to the bathroom? And so the nurse comes back and this is why I could never be a nurse. And this is why you better treat your doggone nurses really, really well. Cause they do all, they do all the, the work, man. And this is, well, this is that new bike trail coming across they're really cutting it in i would walk it today but uh, we'll just stick to the florida trail <clears throat> but uh so yeah i mean i'm thinking and she goes oh mr so-and-so you 
I see you peed all over your bed. Oh my goodness, it's everywhere, you know. And I'm over there just cringing away, going, oh my God, you know. She goes, we're going to have to clean this up, Mr. So-and-so, you know. That, that means we're going to need you to, to, to get out of the bed or whatever it was. Or, but they, maybe they rolled them into another bed. So, you know, think about that. And so they had to clean that mess up. And uh, who knows what he pooped in the bed, too, you know. Uh, just, uh, just crazy. Uh, so that was, uh, that's a pretty long story to get my message across. Uh, so the second time around, um, two weeks, two, not two weeks had gone by. And now my bowels are the, uh, oh shit, we're all the way to the road. Let's turn around. That's cool. I, I didn't realize I was going to, wasn't planning on hiking that far today. Uh, so two weeks later, the, my bowels, had, they obstructed. And uh, that is, uh, that's also very, very painful. Not as, not as much as a perforation. And so now I'm back in the doggone hospital again. And uh, so they, they basically put me on morphine again, you know. But this time is much less of a dose because, you know, if you get too many drugs in you, your painkillers, uh, you, you, the, the bio won't move through your intestines. And so they were just trying to get me on the bare minimum, you know. So I was in pain. The whole time and uh so they you know once again chang comes <laughs> that guy was something else he says uh he says yeah he says i oh yeah okay. that was the other thing on the first surgery i forgot about that and uh so he you know he came in to, to give me the the summary of how the surgery went he says well i we got you stitched up mr ellis he says but there's a good possibility that that stitching won't hold and uh, we'll have to put you right back on the operating table again. <laughs> you know, TMI, you know, I didn't do, but it, luckily he, the stitching held and I didn't have to go for that. But the, the second time I'm in, you know, he comes in and he, you know, he's like, uh, how's Mr. Ellis doing? And to kind of, like you said, he hardly ever talked to me except when he wanted to torture me, you know. And so he says, uh, he says, yeah, he says, we'll give that obstruction a, a day or two, Mr. Ellis and uh if uh, if it doesn't move through, he says I'm going to have to cut you open again. So uh, we'll we'll get the uh, get the, the operating system, no, the operating room uh, lined up, you know, uh, here in a couple of days. But he said let's give it some time, see if uh, see if it uh, works its way through. I'm like oh my god. Well anyway, obviously it it, it did, and uh, you know I'm not trying to gross you out, but that was one one monster of a of a poop on. But the thing was, that nurse, she thought they wanted a poop sample, and they made me poop into a doggone bucket. <laughs> and I'm, I mean, of course you're going to look at it, like, oh my God, look at that thing. It was, it was green, you know, I mean, oh man. And uh, so anyway, I, and, but I can't imagine the nurse that had to come in and, and you know, take that bucket, or maybe, uh, I assume they just dumped it out somewhere, but then you got to clean it. Somebody's got to clean it. So, man, I tell you, that's... That is a rough, rough, rough job. Um, so, uh, yeah, I can just, just bounce around from story to story here. Um, I guess the, the next funny story was when I had cancer the second time. <clears throat> now, you know, I was doing this. It's called, really called a stem cell transplant. And what they want to do is they want to harvest your stem cells, and then they uh, they give them back to you. Actually, there's a couple of good stories with this. And... Uh, so what they what they do to, to make, you get your body to generate more stem cells that's you know what the bone marrow creates is they, and I think it's called nupogen or I, I can't remember but anyway it was this uh, this you had to give yourself uh, it was two no four four shots a day and I'm going to tell you that vial that thing was like that big around about that long so you know you so you had to you put one in each arm, or it, actually, they wanted you to do it in your stomach. I tried it in my stomach, and I, I, I don't know, maybe my stomach's just sensitive. That, that hurt like a bitch. So I went to the thigh. So you know, and I'm scared. If you if you know anything, you know I hate needles. I cannot stand needles, and I don't pass out or anything. But I just I can't stand. That's why I don't you know don't like uh, giving blood or. Or, uh, well, I can't now because you, once you're a cancer survivor, they, don't, well, they won't even take your blood. But, I mean, I still got to go in for blood tests every now and then for my physicals and stuff. 
I mean, man, I just, when I see that needle, it just, it just makes me cringe. So, you so what they did was they sent me home with those needles and, you know, I got to inject myself. So, you know, my, the first time I, I did it, you know, I got it with the right hand and my hand's doing like this, you know, because I'm, I'm scared to death. I'm working it down towards my thigh, you know, trying to get it to right there, you know, and, uh, so I got it in the, in the left leg pretty good, you know, and, but what, that's, that's another thing. So once you get that needle in, it takes a long time to get that liquid into your, into your thigh because it burns, you know, you're just, you have to push it in real slow, you know, just push, 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 push. So that needle sits in your doggone leg for a long time. You know, you can't just, you know, it's not like a little shot, like a flu shot, you know, you're not just, just and you're done, you know, but so you can, you, yeah, see, I'm holding it there. My hand's shaking. And uh, so, yeah, I got the first one in. That was cool. And uh, so now I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to hit the, the right leg. And, uh, you know, I got, I put it in my left hand. And I'm right-handed. And the left hand's doing this number again. You know, I'm coming down towards the thigh. And uh, I got the needle into my thigh. And <laughs> my hand slipped. And so, you know, and of course I'm, I'm freaking out because now this needle is stuck in my leg and it's bobbing around like this, you know, and, and, and you know, the needles, they are just like razor blades. And I didn't realize it was slicing into my thigh. And uh, so I, I found, you know, I, I, I've got it pulled, I, you know, pulled it out. But now, I mean, there's blood everywhere, blood all over the, the side of the, uh, the, the chair, you know, because I, I, I that was another thing. I had to sleep in a chair because of the catheter. You know, and that, on this one they put a instead of a port, I had one of the, they called it the snake man. It's a big long catheter, you know, that just sticks hangs out of your chest, and uh, and that, that's how they can give you the chemotherapy and do and take your blood and everything. You know, it's it's a blessing in a way, but you know you obviously can't sleep laying down because you roll over on the catheter. You know, so you got to sleep in a chair. But uh, so so anyway, the the thing that just blew my mind was this, those shots that I was taking. I think it was like $10,000 worth of medication. This was years ago. Uh, and uh, why in the world would they send me home for me to give the shots to myself? So, you know, the, of course I can't do my arms, so I got had to get my wife to do it, you know? And she's, you know, she, she, she didn't want to do it at all. I said, well, I said honey, I can't, I can't inject it in my stomach. And I said, I can't, if you're just, I said, you know, just just put it in my arm. Well, she, <laughs> I guess she, I guess she Googled it, <laughs> and for some reason, she thought, you know, that she had to treat it like a dart. So she took the needle and threw it into my arm. <laughs> and once again, you know, like I said, that thing's like a razor blade, and and then she, you know, she managed to get it in. But I know I'm feeling something warm running down my arm, you know, and of course now blood's dripping onto the floor of the kitchen. I said, honey, what the, what did you do? And she says, well, when I threw it into your arm, it just, it just sliced it. I said, don't, you don't throw it in. You just, you know, stick it in and then, you know, squeeze the liquid in slowly, you know. Well, after a while, she got pretty good at that. And I only had to do that for two weeks. But then the, the horrible part was, is they didn't, they didn't get enough uh, stem cells. Uh, you know, for me to, to go through the uh, stem cell transplant, even even with all of that. So then uh, they told me, okay, you know, we're going to go directly, because this is another way you can get them. They, they just go directly into the bone. And so once again, I'm back on the table. Dr. Chang's cut me open, and they, they went into the bone. And then once again, they still didn't get enough stem cells. So then they, they said, well, we got one more thing we can try. And I can't remember what it's called, but it's a, it's a different thing. And they just, they just stuck it into my stomach. And man, that hurt like a bastard. And, uh, and they injected that in. And uh, so then, you know, and it was funny because, you know, they kept trying to get the stem cells. And oh, by the way, you know, that's the harvesting of the stem cells is something else, man. You, you know, if you ever seen somebody on kidney dialysis, that's about the same thing. You know, they, they hook you up and your blood runs through a machine and then comes back into your body. And, uh, and you lay there for, you know, I don't know, I remember an hour or two or three or whatever it was. And you just lay there and let the, let the machine just filter your blood until, you know, hopefully it, it'll get to. So they, so they still weren't getting enough stem cells. And then I just, just like by magic, the, the, 
when we were just about to give up and they thought, well, we're just going to have to do it with, you know, less stem cells than we want. The last day they put me on the machine and I guess that that drug that they injected into my stomach had worked its magic over the weekend. And they got a whole bunch. They got they got a lot more than they even needed, which was fantastic. So that was a that was a blessing. Uh, so that was uh, that was good. So that's, you know that's just another surgery that that I had with the with the bones again. So uh, so now you know I guess this video is getting kind of long. I probably should just uh, stop here and then we'll, we'll make another video about uh, some other cancer stories. Uh, I just, you know, some of them are kind of humorous, you know, but some of them are pretty sad, uh, you know. But well, I, I'll tell you. Well, I don't want to finish, finish on a down note. So anyway, that's uh, that's that's my story. But that needle in my thigh, I wish you could have seen, heard me whimpering. <laughs> ah, you know, it it's like getting a spider in my face. You know, it's the same thing. You know, I'm in I'm in horror at the at the sight of that. You know, and if you could just if you could just picture it, I mean, in a movie, it would have been people would have been laughing their buns off. So yeah, anyway. All right, you guys, I uh, hope you enjoy these stories, and I hope I help people just a little bit. The, you know, be sure and keep that uh, list of drugs in your wallet at all times, and, and, and that's true of everything. If you got diabetes or anything, any drugs, you know, always keep that list, because sometimes, you know, you, you're either, if you're in a car accident or you're just, you know, hurting so bad like I was with, with that bowel perforation, you can't speak. You can't tell them, you know, what they need to know. So you have to you have to let the piece of paper do the talking for you. So that's the, the one piece of advice, you know. And I, as I told you, you know, in the pre in the first video, uh, you know, perseverance, you know, be be ready for anything in life because you never know what it's going to throw at you. And uh, just a, a last little tip, uh, you know, I'm still working on that that vegetable garden in my back, and I suggest that you you do the same because uh, I took another load of that sandy soil out today and I've been throwing in the black dirt so pretty soon I'm gonna have vegetables growing and I think that's gonna be real important when the uh, economic calamity comes because it's coming folks you know no way you print another two trillion dollars and in the in, in inflation doesn't happen or and the stock market crashes you know so it's uh it's right around the corner I, I think it's getting closer every day all right peace out